I made an open source Bluetooth Guitar Hero controller. Well, sort of. I used our open source dev kit controller to convert this old Guitar Hero guitar into a multi-console controller. The open controller that this guitar is based off of can connect to PC, Mac, Android, Nintendo Switch, GameCube, as well as SNES should you want to use a Guitar Hero controller on those consoles. Let's go over how I plan on doing this mod. My initial plan was to hijack all the buttons on the open controller and bind them to the buttons on the Guitar Hero controller. This is easily done because all a button really is, is essentially connecting two pins. Whether they be connecting two pins on the ESP32, or if they're connecting a pin to ground. So all we have to do is pretty much take all of the test points on our open controller, and solder them to the buttons on the Guitar Hero PCB. I started off with the D-pad buttons, because they were going to be the simplest to get working. I binded the D-pad buttons to the D-pad buttons on the open controller so that no firmware changes needed to be made for them to function. Up got binded to up, down got binded to down, and so on. Next up was the start and select buttons. These in general were not bad to get working, however I did have to modify the start and select button PCBs of the Guitar Hero controller. I had to cut the PCB of the Guitar Hero controller in order to separate one button from the circuit and make it function on its own. Next up, I just tested the D-pad and start and select buttons with the game on my phone. After I verified that all the buttons were working and were working as intended, I started to move on to the frets of the guitar. This was a little more complicated because I did have to separate two of the buttons since I was running out of buttons to steal on the open controller. Four of the buttons for the frets got binded to the face buttons of the open controller, A, B, X, and Y. The remaining two buttons had to be binded to the left and right triggers. This presented a new problem because the left and right triggers get sent to different pins in our controller than the face buttons do. To solve this problem, I simply had to cut the traces and separate two of the buttons from the frets. Once I cut those traces, I simply soldered a ground wire all the way over to one of the pads that I would now be using as a ground pad. This is where our next problem arises. I'm running out of buttons to steal from the open controller for things like strumming. So what I had to do was go into the firmware and add in two extra buttons so that I could have an up and a down strum. We still had the issue of the whammy bar to resolve, but we'll come back to that later. So now from this point, we have a guitar that can connect to a PC or other consoles, and the button presses are registering, meaning that we can play a basic game of Clone Hero now. However, we're still missing one big feature, the whammy bar. For this, we'll need to make yet again one more change to the firmware to enable the sticks to be read. All that the whammy bar on a Guitar Hero controller truly is, is a potentiometer that reads the position of the whammy bar. All we have to do is connect that to our ESP32 on our open controller, and we can start reading those values right away. If you want to recreate this mod, we'll be creating a wiki article containing wiring diagrams, general information and tips, as well as how to install the new custom firmware for your Guitar Hero controller. If you want to see more content like this, please be sure to subscribe and check out our wiki below.